Hello, my friend. This is Heather. This is the Back to Me podcast. And today I'm talking with Becky Tibbetts and we're talking about success and what success looks like and how to find the spark in your life. Have a listen and let me know what you think and have an outstanding day. Talk to you soon. Hi, my friends. Welcome. This is the Back to Me podcast, and this is Heather, and I am super excited that you're here. You are going to hear some tips and some tricks and some ideas to help you live your happiest and healthiest self. I call it Back to Me because when you are taking care of yourself, Back to Me, then you can take better care of others, and we can all make the world a better place. This is Wellness Your Way, and I am super happy that you're here. Hello, my friends. How are you? I hope you're having a most excellent day. This is Heather. This is the Back to Me podcast. This is the Outstanding Human Amazing Celebrity edition of the podcast. And this is where I get to talk to awesome humans about all things that I think are interesting. And I hope you find interesting too, because heck, why would we be here if it wasn't interesting, right? So today I'm talking with Becky. Is it Tibbetts? Mm-hmm. It's not Tibet. Tibet. <laughs> no. I've been talking to people from all over the world. I just don't know what accent to use anymore. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. How are you doing? Great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. That is such a sweet, I don't know about celebrity hat. but <laughs> Hey, I think, you know, everyone that I talk to in my world is a celebrity because no matter who I talk to, I always learn something new and in my world that makes you a celebrity. So I'm an information junkie. I love learning new things and adding things in and having new ex- thoughts and experiences. And I'm like, that gets, gets me so excited. So you are a coach too. How exciting. Yeah. And what kind yeah. of coaching? Um, let's tell people, everybody, what kind of coaching you do. Yes. Well, I do executive and leadership development coaching, uh, focusing primarily on like work-life balance, um, positive intelligence, all of, all of the things, but it's more like a holistic approach to coaching where we don't compartmentalize just, oh, I'm just an executive. I only want to talk about what you do at work. We see how all of the pieces fit together and we address those as they come up. So it's a great opportunity to really... Yeah, meet some awesome people like you were saying and really um, see transformation happen for them. And there are, there's way more pieces than, you know, (laughs) this is just my job and then the rest of my life. No, no, that's not what it is. It's just like a piece of it, right? And one of the things that I always, because I'm super curious about people is how, how did you start getting in? How did you get into coaching Mm -hmm. this kind of jam that you're in? Yes. Well, it started back when I was an HR manager and I love people, but I also love goal setting and assessments and all of those things. Right. And so anybody that's been in HR knows that you can only, (laughs) that's only like one time a year. Um, I was really blessed in my previous role to be able to do quarterly check-ins and really support people um, additionally throughout the year. So I lived for those times. Um, and then I started just getting curious about what is coaching? What does it look like? How does it support people? How does it really help them fully develop? Um, and as we dug into that and I brought it back to my workplace, I just love doing it. And then there becomes this, this shift that has to happen. It's like, well, I really love this, but I don't like all the paperwork of HR anymore. Right. So I'm living for January and quarterly check-ins and then really kind of making that transition once, um, yeah, seasons change and um, we actually moved to a different state and it was during COVID. And so it was just a good transition to just launch into my business and really get to focus on what I love doing every day. And that's my hope for all of my clients that they live lives that they really love getting up and living every day. And so... It's just an honor to be able to um, share that and um, like help my clients experience that too. That's awesome. And it's so true. Like you can be in a role and when you recognize that there's like, there's a driving piece of it that is really while you're there, 
mm-hmm. and how you can incorporate more of that. And it's okay to change. I, I don't know. You, they, way back in the day, it was like you had one job your whole life. That's going back pretty far. But there was a time when you're like, here's your career. Boom. You're in your mm-hmm. box. And it is, but that's been shifting a lot. And it's interesting that, um, like you said, you know, you were curious about coaching because I found, I can remember when I met my first life coach, someone who told me they were a life coach was probably 15 years ago. And I went, what is that? Like, mm-hmm. Is that a real job? <laughs> right. that's a thing that's a thing you just tell everybody what to do in their lives that's right? what usually happens <laughs> I'm like you get paid for that I've been telling people I've been bossing people around my whole life although that's not what coaching is but <laughs> yes <laughs> so funny yeah. and do you find that I mean that it was hard to transition out of corporate into the life of I call it solopreneurism or uh, yes, actually, um, in our coach training, you know, they teach us to be great coaches, but they don't teach us how to build great businesses. Yeah. Um, I'm also a mentor coach with the, um, international coach federation. And so one of the things that I incorporate is like, Hey, here's the get starter business development pieces that you don't have. And they're starting to make that shift and have that available, uh, now, but seven years ago when I got started, I had no idea. And so there's a little bit of this, you're taking the leap you're investing in other things that you don't want to do. Right. And so there's a season where it's like, I'm doing all of this stuff. This is not why I got into coaching. Right. And how do I navigate that? What do I need? Because you'll meet 500 gurus on this, on the side of the street that will tell you, Oh, do it this way. Oh, do this. This is the fast path. This is, you know, and it's not necessarily. And so I've tried on a lot of things, invested a ton And probably my best advice for other coaches out there is just do what intuitively feels right to you. Right. And it is true. There is no one way. (laughs) There there are the people who will say, this is how you hit your, they throw around the 10,000 a month. Hit your 10,000 a month. I was like, why does that have to be the target right Mm -hmm. now? Right. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's actually how I got into coaching because I, I was at, did I, I don't remember if we talked about this when we talked before. I, my first career, I was a CPA mm-hmm. for 15 years. And then I left because I wasn't fulfilled and I went into the wellness space. But I could just see all these health and wellness people. They teach you to be a really good practitioner, a really good massage therapist, whatever it is, but they don't teach you how to run a business. So I ended up coaching all of these people on how to run their business while I was doing the health and wellness side. And then, yeah, it's just like, no, let's just coach people because that's where I feel most pulled to. Um, do you find that, uh, cause your program is called spark. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tell me, does that stand for something? Mm-hmm. Yes. So oh, it I is an acronym this. and I love I'm acronyms. helping people. I know everybody likes an acronym. Well, it helps me too in my programs as we're going through them. Um, so what the S stands for, um, success awareness. And so really kind of digging into there, we have tools that we use, different areas that we dig into, and what does success look like for you? Um, And then um, we go into purpose development and exploration under that purpose. Um, Purpose, passions, all of those under the P. And then A is accountability. That, that's not very nice word that <laughs> most people really desire. It's kind of like parenting children. I have um, several kids and it's like, oh, you know, they love to have um, rules, right? And boundaries and different things because they thrive in that. Um, that's the same for us. <laughs> we thrive with accountability. Like We're just bigger kids. <laughs> structure, right? Clear structure to reach those goals and really see the transformation. And it's really not just being accountable to me. It's creating structures of accountability. Um, under the purpose one, we also dive into core values and living okay. in an alignment with those core values. And um, I... Uh, I'm just really passionate about that because I felt the soul split kind of thing where it's like, I'm doing this thing over here, but it isn't aligning with who I am or how I want to show up. Um, and then, um, where did we leave off at? A R R. Yes. So that's reclaiming a lot of stuff. 
It might be reclaiming your boundaries. I work with a lot of HR managers, directors, et cetera. Right. And a lot of times if they're out of work-life balance is because they haven't created those boundaries that really protect their time so that they can be fully present at work and then fully present at home uh, with their family or friends or doing other things that just really reignite their spark. And an important part here is also reclaiming rest. Um, I probably talk about rest and boundaries a lot. <laughs> In I think my those thinking. are huge. Those are yes. huge. Because driven people, A-type personality, high achievers have a really hard time not being productive. And I fall into that category too. It's like, oh, how do I rest? Well, you rest by gratefulness. You rest by enjoying a sunset or a sunrise and just giving yourself that time to not be driven all the time. And then what you see on the other side, neuroscience will show you and other um, disciplines is that you actually are more creative and more present with people when you actually take that time to rest. Uh, for me, it looks like sleep, <laughs> right? And so sleep is such a huge part. Uh, we talk a lot about health and wellness um, also because if we're not taking care of ourselves, then we are empty and we're trying to pour from the proverbial empty cup, right? And so many women um, are running on empty. They have nothing else to give. They're going through the motions. It's the day in, the day out, the daily grind of trying to get it all done and fill it all in and also fill up our own buckets. But what we realize in the end is that productivity leaves us dry and it right. leaves us needing some time. And so for me, um, finding rhythms of rest and refreshment, and it doesn't look like, um, you know, I don't have to get a massage every week. I don't have to go do my nails. I don't have to go buy something. No, it's simple things like, hey, how about I just wash my face and relax with a nice cup of tea in the evening? You know, it's simple things where um, that don't have to cost you a lot to be able to really incorporate it. It's sitting down and taking time to read a good book that's been sitting on your nightstand for months. Yeah, I see you ladies out there. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> The stack of books. Yes. <laughs> the yeah, renewal notice. We're play, right. And we're driven and we're performers. So we're doing a lot of reading. And so sometimes, um, you know, it's just taking time to be able to be like, oh, let's learn something new today. Or let's go out and do something that we really enjoy. Or for a lot of professionals, like in the counseling and other caring um, roles, it's taking time for self-care to just get up and exercise. Get right. up and stretch. Do you have rhythms of breaks? I'm the worst about that because I can schedule people right on top of each other. So I had to really start scheduling. Okay, here's a 15 minute break. I can go to the bathroom. I can go get a drink, get a fresh cup of tea or coffee or whatever, and then come back and then do some PQ reps, which are positive intelligence reps to really prepare and then be present for the person that's going to be sitting in front of me. And it's hard when you, because not just having meetings with people, but that back to back to back tasks doesn't give you that pause to like full stop, finish that, start something new because it is a brain mm -hmm. shift. So you can't be fully present in the next thing you're going to do, which is why multitasking isn't a thing. Like you can't yeah. actually do it. Because you can't be fully on in that thing or that with that person if you haven't taken that pause. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. I um, I was thinking, have you heard of the, you must have heard of the Pomodoro technique. Well, I'm not very good with names. What it, Can you describe it a so little that's bit? So that's the, one of those productivity hacks, which I don't think are really productivity hacks. But it's it helps people like me without focus. It's like... You set a timer and you say, I'm going to work on this for 20 minutes. I think it's 20 minutes. And then you take a break and you're not allowed to just go check your emails in that break. You're supposed mm -hmm. to like go, like stand outside, look out the window, do something for mm -hmm. five minutes, 10 minutes. And then I think at the end of three or four of them, you get a longer break. So it's like little chunks oh, yeah. of productivity with a scheduled break in between with the make like trying really hard to make sure that you 
actually take that time because like mm-hmm. you were saying you know we're we're used to filling our time so it's like i have five minutes what can i get done in five minutes <laughs> <You know? It's> like, <laughs> right how about you just sit there and be grateful for what's <laughs> happened already in the day right so i don't i don't do that one particularly um probably along the same lines as time blocking so if it's not on my calendar i don't do it so if i don't have lunch scheduled i probably not going to happen right? because people have access to my calendar. Am I the only one that people have access? Probably not. A lot of entrepreneurs fall into that, counselors, et cetera, where if you don't set up your schedule, somebody will take over your schedule. And so I do a lot of time blocking um, and put in specifically. So I do 90 minutes. So if I want to do deep work and I'm working on projects or creativity, I'll do a 90 minute block and then a 15 to 30 minute break in between. And I find I can probably pull off about three of those. There's experts out there that can pull off four in a day. But for me, because I have other meetings and different things, I get, usually if I can get three in, I feel really productive and I feel really focused. But it requires the day before blocking out that time and being really intentional um, to really make sure that you get um, that that. Un, undistracted time to really focus and be creative. And I can't be creative if there's people wandering around me or if I'm over here thinking about checking emails because right. emails isn't even on my list to check today. <laughs> right. Yeah. So. Or the scroll, getting caught in the scroll. And oh. it's true. I mean, interesting. I was talking to a gentleman in the UK who, and I didn't realize this, he was talking about the eight hour workday actually just came out as a product of um, industrialization and unionization. And so it was just like a compromise between, well, we'll ask them to work eight hours, they'll have eight hours off and eight hours of sleep. So the eight hour workday isn't actually even how long most people can be productive. He said studies have shown for the most part, part you can be productive for four. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you can do three of those 90 minute blocks, you're a superstar because I'd be exhausted. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is exhausting. Don't get me right. wrong, but I just feel like I've I've intentionally marked out those times during the day um, to really kind of focus on that. And one of those might be clients and client follow up too. So right, um, it's not all creativity. And it's sure. good. It's I like the fact I like the, how you're pointing out you're being intentional on your day because even if you're not a solopreneur, even if you're a mom, or if you're you know have a regular job intentionally deciding how you will spend your day puts you so far ahead Mm -hmm. and you can be aware of the oh my god I haven't given myself any time for myself to even you know go for a bio break Mm -hmm. (laughs) or it's like when will I you know xyz and if we don't if we go if you it's like you said if you're not intentional and I mean I made the mistake I will totally admit to making the mistake of giving people access to my calendar Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and it'll blow up in your face and you'll hopefully learn your lesson I mean it happened actually this summer past summer when I when I went looking for podcast guests and I went away for the weekend and I hadn't set up my parameters my boundaries my calendar boundaries and I came back and my calendar was exploded it's like Mm -hmm. I didn't even have room to talk to clients (laughs) So Mm -hmm. lesson learned, right? It's like, oh, Mm -hmm. shoot, boundaries. Yeah. But on all of my calendars, I actually have that boundary set that there's always 15 minutes between everybody because I can't Mm -hmm. do the back to back. Yeah. Too much, too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I like, I also really want to go back and really liked your S. The S S. is the best, Mm -hmm. the success awareness, right? Awareness, yes. And we kind of touched on it in the beginning Mm -hmm. when you said, oh, yeah, they teach us, you know, how to get to six figures or seven figures. And really, if success is just the bottom line of how much you're making, you're missing the whole point. Success includes that you're excited to get up and do what you do every day not just how much you're making at doing it, which pigeonholes some people into staying in jobs that they really hate, but they make good money. Right. Um, And so looking at that and looking at your strengths. So success awareness is like, okay, what what are my strengths? What what am I good at? Um, And really kind of leaning into those and figuring out, well, what could I do with those things? 
every I believe that everybody's process, whether it's their careers or they're just they're in their journeys, adds one little piece to their overall calling in their lives of this is what I'm called to do. And they know like in that season, it would be like, oh yeah, this is totally what I'm called to do. I don't know if you're like me, but I was in criminal justice and I was like, oh, this is what I'm called to do. <laughs> I loved that season. I learned a ton in that season. Then it was like, oh, okay, yeah, now I'm called to be a mom. Yes, I'm called to be a mom and help out my friends and watch their kids. Okay, that's great. That was a great season. And then I'm like, oh, now I get an opportunity to go out and do something because any parent that's been a parent for a while, it's like, whew, that's a demanding job. Sometimes right. it'd be easier to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even though that's just a whole nother ball of wax because I've been there too. And um, I was like, oh, yeah, 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 now I get to, you know, go into HR and, oh, this is what I've been called to do. And like everything just kind of led up to that in learning and development. And then like you, I met my first life coach and I was like, hey, I want to connect with you. I didn't even know what I was going to say to her. <laughs> I was just like, hey, um, yeah, I kind of want to connect. I'm not exactly sure. I want to find out more about what you want to, what you do, because I think I'm supposed to do that. And so our conversation kind of went like that. And she's like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I have no idea. I mean, right. you've got to like unpack what it even is. And really, that was our coach, my first coach and our first coaching engagement was digging into what is coaching, what is not coaching. Um, the difference between coaching, mentoring, and consulting, because people seem to get that all mixed up, or counseling. Yeah, they really mix up the counseling, psychotherapy, and yes. which it's not. Yes, right? we're not therapists. No. And we're not the athletic coach. Although I'm going to cheer you on and I'm going right. to like help and support you, you are going to lead and guide the conversation into what you really need um, from me. And it's a co-creation and just such a great partnership to have a support person that just comes alongside of you, helping you discover and achieve your dreams. Right. <laughs> and I was like, everybody should have a coach. Everybody should have that person that's cheering for them. And a mentor says, hey, I know the way to get there. And here, take I'll take you along the path to get there. And that's kind of like um, athletic co coaches. It's like they know how to play the game. And so they're going to teach yeah. you how to play the game. But in coaching, you don't have to have a coach that knows how to play the exact game that you want. You need to have a coach that helps you to be able to develop something brand new. And that's when you're stepping into something. And so that's what my first coach helped me to do. I was like, I didn't even, I knew I was called to do this, but I, beyond that, I had no <laughs> idea. And then you start, it starts unfolding. And then, and she, you know, let me know about the ICF and how you get involved with that and certification process and coaching and really helping me to find, Hey, what's, a, what's your co coaching program? What is my first step? Oh, my first step is you know, starting a coaching school. Okay. What coaching school can I go to? The right. ICF has hundreds. Yeah, I know. I know. Of accredited, great um, community practices. And so I had to go with one that really fit my schedule at that time. And so that, that was kind of the process. And so it's just kind of taking um, the lead and taking next steps. And so I think it's really helpful. And, and even for your listeners, if you're like looking for a coach, know what you're looking for. If you're wanting somebody to co-create something instead of somebody telling you all the time, oh, no, you can't do that. That hasn't been done before. I don't know. Right. But really discover your greatness. Then partnering with a coach is where you want to be. And I always talk about it as like it's a future of helping you see clear your like what your path, where you want to go. Which is why I was like, I love the, the success awareness, because some people have never actually paused to say, what do I want to do? Like, what mm -hmm. am I called to do? They just feel like you said stuck because it's, mm -hmm. well, I need to make this money for the house, the cottage, the, the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just going to stay here instead yeah. of like, what do I feel called to? What do I feel drawn to? And feeling... Because it's out in the big wide world, it can be kind of scary, right? Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you're alone and you're, and sometimes uh, I've seen, oh, I've, I've experienced it where people think you're doing what, <laughs> you yeah. know, and if you don't have someone in your corner, then it's, you might just give up and go back, even yeah. though maybe it is the place you were meant to be. 
but Mm -hmm. um, that coach is that person. I mean, it's not like we're going to Pollyanna you and say, oh, yes, everything's great. Like our job, our job is to like, like be real. (laughs) Right. But we're not going to say no. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And we ask tough questions. Yeah. A lot of times they're like, oh, that's a tough question. And it'll get them thinking. And that's where uh, creating new awareness happens. Right. Yeah. It's like, well, have you considered it this way or why? I love the analogy of going for a ride with somebody. A coach gets in in the passenger seat. You're still the driver of your life. You're the expert on your own life and experiences and and desires and dreams. But the coach gets in and just notices things. It's like, oh, why would you take a left instead of a right? Was it was the right even available to you in decisions that you're making? Right. Um, some other work that I do is positive intelligence. And that's a whole big box to unpack because we all have what are called saboteurs. Oh, yes. <laughs> those things that get in the way. And coaches come along and help us recognize this. It's like, oh, is that a saboteur? Is that like your inner critic that's coming up for you right now? How can we calm them down a little bit? So your sage can rise up and really kind of be present and in the moment to maybe make a different decision. Because what we recognize is that our saboteurs get really comfortable yeah. and we keep on these patterns that are not helping us. And so to, to stop doing that, we learn to quiet our saboteurs and strengthen our sage to really overcome in areas where we've just gotten derailed time after time after time after time. And really have, like in some instances, um, it's, you know, women who are afraid to just speak up. Right. And so they miss um, opportunities, opportunities for employment, opportunities for advancement within their job, because they're just like, oh, yeah, that they're better than me. It's like, right. oh, probably not. You know, and if you don't have somebody that you're sharing those opportunities with that can talk through those and really help you feel empowered and really speak truth to you, um, that can be difficult to overcome on your own. And so, um, yeah, that's just the great um, power of coaching. Right. Did you ever um, read Jen Sincero? The You Are a Badass. She wrote You Are a Badass. Oh, no. You know what? It is on my list. Is that one of the books on your bedside table that you haven't read yet? (laughs) No, I have a whole list in Audible that I'm going to listen to. So if you listen, actually, it's a really good idea to listen to her books because she's probably not for everyone, but I love the way she reads her books because she's so real. But she Mm -hmm. calls your saboteur, she calls it the little prince. Mm -hmm. And she uses the road trip analogy as well. It's like the little prince will try to grab the wheel and throw a temper tantrum if Mm -hmm. you try to change something. And you've got to let him know he can come, but he has to stay in the back seat. (laughs) <laughs> right yeah. he's he feels entitled and privileged and like he's the boss of everyone but mm-hmm. he's not right yeah and so one of my favorite things is like you have a choice right <laughs> in this situation right now you can make a different choice than what you've made before and there's so su- there's such a hopeless feeling when you're a don't know what to do because i've been there i was like i just didn't know even know what to do but two realizing, oh, I have a choice. Um, And then that's where we come full circle back to um, talking about core values. Right. And that's under success awareness also, because your core values is who you are at the core. And so my two core values is faith and responsibility. And so when they become little sayings, so responsibility is my response is my responsibility. That is like a mantra of mine. I've raised my children. (laughs) I was like, okay, what's your responsibility in this situation? I ask myself that regularly. That's the power of core values. And then when we get into difficult situations, we realize, oh, hey, my response, my responsibility. What am I choosing here? What am I choosing in this relationship? What am I choosing in this career? And sometimes we'll surprise ourselves (laughs) and be like, oh, there's a new choice. Right. But if you're not sure... That's, again, coming back and saying, you know what? I don't know what my choice is here. Can we talk about choices today? Let's let's brainstorm what would be some great options. What would be some great outcomes that you would want to see happen today um, to just reclaim your voice and, and your power to choose? Right. And 
And you can see that if people aren't taking, because I, I talk about responsibility a lot, if you're not taking responsibility for your choices, for the way you decide to react to things, even taking responsibility for being responsible to yourself, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to go off the rails, I think. At mm -hmm. some point, you're going to realize that you're not happy and things aren't the way you want, but mm -hmm. that's because you haven't taken the, you take, you haven't taken the steering wheel, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not and a self-driving car. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, and then gently and lovingly and compassionately, because we all have been there where we feel like we don't have a choice, but we do. Right. And gently and lovingly say, well, you know what? You do have a choice right now. Is, Is that your dog barking? Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thankfully, he's out. And out. It's real <laughs> life. He's a big barker. It's real life. <laughs> I know. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, really helping them to reclaim that and realize that. Like, yeah. And it's okay. What's your choice in that? And realizing, oh, I have a choice sometimes is the biggest aha moment uh, for my clients ever. It's like, oh, you mean I don't have to do that? Or like when we have boundaries, do you mean, you mean I can tell people who can be in my house? I was like, so something for me, I'm like, yes, you most certainly can. <laughs> oh my like, gosh. What, where's your fence boundaries, right? Because some people that don't have boundaries or haven't really been trained in boundaries don't realize that they don't have to keep letting their employer step over their boundaries or their family or grown children or whatever the situation might be. It's like, no, actually you could. Right. You could and you'll get, you that. will get pushed up, pushed back if you've always, if you've never had boundaries. But yeah. we also, it is true that you aren't really very often taught to, I mean, toddlers know how to say no, but, um, <laughs> but after that, you know, it's like, may I please? And then you just, you know, you're educated on how to ask permission to go and do things and not recognizing that you are, you have the power, you yeah. can make those decisions. And that is like mm -hmm. one of the best places. Yeah. Yeah. I love what Brene Brown says. She says, clear is kind and clear is kind when everybody's had a voice at the table. Right. So really kind of like, I think what we've been programmed to do is like, it's been a no. So then we don't talk about it again. Right. <laughs> Where sometimes we have to say, OK, it's been a no, but I want to lean into this conversation a little bit further. And hey, can we talk about that? And why it, could you give me a little background on why it's a no? And so in professional development, career development, annual development time, I always would lean into those conversations of like, why are you counting yourself out already? Right. Let's dig into that a little bit more so that we can understand. And have you had that conversation with your manager? Right. right. Of like, help me to understand or going back um, and having the conversation of like, OK, I really heard you about I need to improve X, Y and Z. Could we talk about that a little bit more of what that looks like? Because people usually are not willing to have those conversations. No. Disappointed. They're discouraged. They'll come and complain to HR. <laughs> To which then I go, oh, hey, I'm happy to brainstorm some ideas and how to have a conversation with your manager. But then you need to have this tough conversation. And people don't lean into tough conversations very well. No. <laughs> At least in my experience. And sometimes I know I could be the freezer in the in the conflict. I totally have that. There's fight, flight, fight, flight, and freeze. And if it's too intense, I will freeze. I'm a processor, so I need to take a minute. And so sometimes just being empowered to know that, I know, hey, can we take a minute? I just want to think about this for a minute. And then can we circle back around in like 30 minutes? A, yeah. you've already had 15 minutes for your emotions to now decrease. <laughs> right. Over the situation. Take some breaths. Yes. And in leadership development, I talk about, okay, you know you're ready to – have that conversation when you're willing to sit next to them and really co-create a solution to the situation. And often or, I think people are afraid of those conversations because they've played out all the worst scenarios, yeah. whether it's at work or at home or with relationships or with anything, mm -hmm. because I've had those conversations. They've already 
played this whole scenario of why this is like this and why this is like this and put a story mm -hmm. behind it. And it's probably not right. <laughs> yes. And so we do play the what if game, don't we? We all yes. get trapped in that. It's like, what if I say that? And then they don't do anything. But here is where it comes back to the core value and taking responsibility. I'm proud of myself when I have a tough conversation because my response is my responsibility, regardless of the outcome. You can just let go of the outcome. You showed up for yourself and you should be really stinking proud of that. Right. Right. You were willing to lean into a really tough conversation. Maybe it didn't go the way you wanted. OK, get with a partner or get with your coach and debrief about that. Yeah. OK, does that need another follow up to say, hey, you know, I, I know that this didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. Could we have another conversation? Um, and really, I just feel like that is just so much more um, authentic and genuine in really helping each other to grow in our relationships at and home we, and, and at we work. more productive, right? Like, yeah. instead of sitting on it and becoming resentful and having it grow into something worse, like, yeah divorces or new jobs or, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm quitting because they don't respect me. Well, I've seen people who cycle through jobs and it's always somebody else's fault. And like, mm -hmm. maybe you're the only, only common denominator in there, my friend. <laughs> that is a hard one too, right? But they also will talk about, oh, you know, they didn't take any of my, um, you know, everything that I uh, had proposed or something. And I'm like, but did you propose it to them? Like, how did you propose it? Right. You know, was it on the fly that you just threw out something or were you really passionate and had some, you know, had some conversation and dialogue around it? Um, because that becomes a different conversation. Um, yeah. Besides just being in a brainstorming idea and you just threw something out and then they always take somebody else's. Well, that is brainstorming in a team. Uh, it's not that you weren't heard, but what is, what is the mindset shift behind that that you could actually take away? Yeah. Um, and focus on what's the positive. So we come back to positive right. intelligence where it's like, oh, is, the, is it the inner critic that's telling you that? Because they might value that. But we also value group think. And we know that as we group think and we're open and listening to one another, that the greatest ideas all kind of come to the surface. Oh, my gosh. Group think is the best. <laughs> it is. It's my I favorite. It. it is my Thank hardest you. part about entrepreneurship. It Not is having a group think. Yeah. I That's just why I go to masterminds. <laughs> yes. I do have a lot of buddies, but it's just like, you know, it's it's hard to not have a whole team where you just bounce ideas off of each other and create amazing things. Um, yeah. I get so. you. I totally get you. <laughs> and so the year, so yours, you have a whole Spark program. Is that like ongoing people are enrolling regularly mm -hmm. or does it launch yes. every now and then? Yes, I'll have a, um, I have a quarterly six week uh, positive intelligence training cool. and coaching program. And so that's a group coaching program that lasts for six weeks, really kind of digging into what is positive intelligence? How can I quiet my saboteurs and let my sage because everybody's happier and more joy filled and fulfilled when we're operating that from that sage perspective. So that's a quarterly um, uh, offering. And then I have, yeah, three, six and 12 month programs for my Spark program, depending on what you're wanting to get into. Three right. months, we can address a couple of things, but we all know that it takes 45 days to yeah. change a habit. Yeah. And that's where, you know, if you're really wanting to dig in and really serious about it, I encourage my six and 12 month programs because those are where you're going to see the most results um, because they're, they're lasting. <laughs> Yeah, it's like having your partner for a whole year is completely different than, um, you know, somebody that just drops in on occasion and picks up the little pieces. Um, it's like uh, going to the gym, you know, you yeah. could go for every now and then for three months and think, why, why is there no change? But go ever for a year and you will see a difference at the end, right? Yeah, there's a coach I know who talks about coaching and he's like, I can't do the push ups for you. <laughs> Right. right. That is such a valuable thing in coaching is that, yeah, we can't do the work for you. I can give you all the assessments. I can give you the tools, the feedback, the encouragement, the support that they need. 
uh, to really be successful. But if they're not integrating, if they're not doing the work in between the sessions, they're not going to see the results. Right. Yeah. So true. Mm -hmm. So awesome. Thank you so much. Before we go, though, I am always give the opportunity for a final word of wisdom. If you have one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so hard. (laughs) A word of wisdom. I figured you just like. Boom, mic drop. Oh, it. there's just so many thoughts that were just I know. Going through my mind. I'm like, okay, let's see. Final word of wisdom. Never stop learning and never stop investing in yourself because you're worth it. Those are beautiful. Boom. You did have the mic drop. I knew you had one in there. <laughs> did I mention I'm a processor? <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> if I'd known that at the beginning, I would have told you that I was going to ask you that question at the end. But yeah. thank fun. you so much, Becky, for coming and sharing with everybody and for all of your wisdom and knowledge and mm-hmm. everything that you do in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. I, it's just an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It was Absolutely. so fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love these, right? I know. It's so fun. <laughs> Okay, my friends in podcast land, that's us. Remember, comment, like, subscribe. Check out Becky's Spark program. I love acronyms. And (laughs) take care of yourselves. I will see you next time. Hi, my friend. Thanks so much for listening to this entire podcast. If you found it useful and you're like me and you like, like helping others, please feel free to share this. Just give it a like. Give it a comment. If you found something useful in it, there's a chance that someone else will find something useful as well. Also, if you have any questions at all, I can absolutely help and I would love to help. You can email me at heather at prosperityflowcoaching.com. If you want more of this awesome content, you can follow me on Instagram, Heather Stewart Coaching. You can follow me on Facebook, Prosperity Flow Coaching. And I have a personal request. I want to help as many people as I can with these podcasts. And if you could give me a review, hopefully a good one, <laughs> if you could share, if you could send this out into the world, I would truly appreciate it. I hope you have an amazing day. And I hope that you find your way to wellness by getting back to me. Take care, my friend.